Hey, this is Dr. Ruscio. Let's go into a direct comparison of the treating the numbers paradigm of functional medicine versus the treating the person paradigm of functional medicine. The functional and integrated medicine providers are an important complement and alternative to standard and conventional medical care. This is something that for me personally was incredibly helpful in my own healthcare journey. But however, as we detailed in the last video, much of the functional medicine and, and integrative medicine paradigm has been based upon this industry influence testing and, and overuse of supplement sort of paradigm, this treating the numbers, not treating the person. And this usually does not help people. It oftentimes can harm them. And so let's now lead to this comparison. And what I put together is a scorecard. So you can see side by side what the percent outcomes tend to be in terms of do you have a 10% or a 40% likelihood of benefit from these paradigms. And again, our, our operating principle here will be treat the person, and by treating the person, this leads to far better results, building upon our past two principles that the science tells us how to treat people, not tests, and many of those tests are inaccurate. Okay, so here is the treating the patient versus treating the numbers scorecard. This is a side-by-side -side comparison, and we'll outline these briefly and develop them briefly, but food allergy testing sums out to about a 10 to 48% response rate or benefit rate, whereas the low FODMAP diet, just as one example, based upon the individual symptoms, leads to a 50 to 80% response rate. And the data here I'm providing are mainly from meta-analyses, which are summaries of the available clinical trials. So already you can see out of the gate if we use the right paradigm for diet, we can have a five times uh, higher benefit or you know, double the benefit. This next point here is avoiding probiotics if someone has SIBO and just using antibiotics. And a recent meta-analysis found a 51% response rate to rifaximin, which is great. However, if we go over to the treating the person paradigm and we look at the SIBO response rate to probiotics, it's about the same, 53%. However, if you add probiotics to antibiotics, you get an 85% response rate, okay? So again, we're seeing this 30% better results when we're treating the person rather than treating the labs. And a little bit harder to quantify specifically adrenal support based upon testing as compared to symptoms, but we'll outline this in a moment, and I think it's, it's pretty clear and obvious that we don't want to use the testing mainly because a meta-analysis found that over half the time, the tests and the individual do not match. So when you really lay this out, the scorecard shows there's a much higher likelihood of benefit when you treat the person, and there's a much lower likelihood of benefit and even a chance of harm when you treat the labs. But let's outline this just a touch further. So there have been a few studies looking at the response rates to food allergy testing guided dieting. However, I should speak to the fact that this, this 10 to 48% response, when you actually look at these studies individually, you see that people oftentimes end up doing one of two things. One, they're more diligent with their diet. So there's kind of this cleaning up of the diet and getting rid of processed foods, which has an impact in and of itself. Also, perhaps more importantly, the foods that are normally advised to be avoided are ones that we already have encapsulated into various diet templates. So someone could give you a handout for, let's say, a paleo diet, and you could follow that minus the 300 to 1,000 some odd dollars of cost having to go to a lab and wait weeks to get your results back. So by the time someone got their lab results back, they could already be weeks into their improvement at far less of a cost just by using what their research has informed are diet handouts that are clusters of foods that are known to be problematic for people. Um, now with the low FODMAP diet, there's that higher response rate of 50 to 80%. So when you put these side by side, you see that the testing produces lower results, takes more time and costs more money. All right, so this is just step one, but already we're seeing that the treatment of the person paradigm is putting us at an advantage. When we go over to treating the person as it pertains to SIBO, treating the numbers would advocate for 
don't use probiotics, use antibiotics. And like we discussed earlier, there's about a 51% response rate to antibiotics from a recent meta-analysis, which is great, right? That is a big step in the right direction. However, a 2017 meta-analysis in the Journal of Clinical uh, Gastroenterology found that probiotics have a similar response rate of 53%, but when you add antibiotics to probiotics, you go from a 53 to an 85% response rate. So as you start building these on top of each other, we can have better success with the diet, less time, less cost, and then we can have better response for SIBO if we use the data to treat the person and not treat the numbers. And then when we come over to adrenal health, as I mentioned earlier, a recent meta-analysis found that over 50% of the time, the lab results and the individual symptoms did not match. What can really be sad about this, and, and we published a case study on this recently, you can have an individual who doesn't really exhibit adrenal fatigue symptoms, yet their test says they have adrenal fatigue. So this person who doesn't seem to be exhibiting any of the symptoms is told to avoid coffee, reduce exercise, take a bunch of supplements, and guess what happens? These people don't feel better. In fact, they may even feel worse because you're having them contort their lifestyle in an unnecessary fashion, again, as one of our recent case studies exemplified. Now, if you're treating the person, you don't use the tests because of the questionable accuracy, and you ask questions about the individual. How is your energy? How is your sleep? Are these symptoms getting better as we progress through gut care, dietary, and lifestyle changes? If yes, you know, great, then we're good. We'll keep going. It's working. Or if you're still having issues with fatigue or exercise intolerance, your symptoms kind of dictate that there could be some sort of stress maladaptation, then we can use various adrenal supports to support you as a person and your symptoms and not get wrapped up in treating the labs. So again, when you tally this all up, you really see how the paradigm of treating the person is far more effective than treating the labs. Even though the labs can kind of pull it at your emotional strings, remember that most of the labs are inaccurate and they don't actually tell us how to better treat you. So treating the person really leads to better outcomes with less time and with less money. So I hope this is somewhat apparent that we should treat people, not numbers. And again, that we get much better results when we do so. And in the next video, I'll expand further on the approach that we use at the clinic, which is treating the person. Um, so you can better understand what it looks like when you really treat a person and you, you get out of this kind of uh, you know, array of lab tests and then treatment of the test and you move over to this paradigm of listening to the person and really personalizing the care to them.